it's after like we said yesterday the first point is to go in section 19 <laughs> that's one section before the wood with all the boys in a good position but we said yesterday communication really important guys from the beginning eat and drink Sam you stay around Matthew from the beginning when he stops for a piss you're there you're all, all day you're there you go in the sections behind him yeah. two guys to to give a wheel when they have a, a problem Matthew and uh, Jens all the others in the beginning take attention for the breakaway that's why boys is so important communication eat and drink like I said last week keep thinking even when you're doing that break don't get over excited just keep thinking thinking it's a long day the, the all the energy you save in the beginning it's something you can use at the end. Uh, I really like this race, so I'm always pretty nervous and it's the end of a uh, big classics campaign only. So uh, I guess uh, you try to give it one more good go in the, for me, one of the best races of the year. Honestly, I'd say after the team meeting, it's more excitement. Obviously I'm nervous before the start, but I am um, just trying to think about not the race really. I, obviously you're going to think about the race, but for me, it's just a case of trying to almost shut down for the first 100k you got to stay awake and stay near the front but that 100k can take a couple of hours so i think it's trying to save energy and eat 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 and get as much energy in you as can well the moment that we ha the moment we have the meeting is sort of the moment that it all sets in for this for this for this race parry bay it's it's not like any other meeting you know it's sort of a spine spine tingly moment talking about talking about the race and talking about what our goals are and I mean, it is just another race, and and uh, there's a certain process you follow for any other race, but this one is, uh, I mean, just has a totally different feeling about it. Yeah, you're you're nervous, but it's it's all the feelings you have. I think it's all positive feelings. You're, you practically the whole winter you, you're working for these races, these races only, um, and to be there at the start, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's always a really special feeling. But, definitely positive feeling uh, to first of all be there and then uh, yeah to try to try and make it a good race for me I feel like it's game on as soon as a neutral flag drops uh, the break has gone really good job and you know what we said uh, this morning uh, just do your turns like everyone else eat and drink that's important uh, but a really great job good job Adam there's just a different feeling about this first 100k. It's a it's a 100k of anticipation of of entering into the what seems like a four hour long final. It's it's stressful from from the first cobble section and everyone's fighting for position and, and no one's no one's giving anyone any space and and uh, I mean there's a mutual respect f amongst all the riders at its Parry Bay, but you can't have res enough respect. You gotta you gotta take your spot in the peloton and it's and it is just a war and it's. It's punches, there's crashes, and, and it's all about riding, riding the good position. And for me, for now, all the years that I've done it, the cobble parts aren't actually like they're sketchy, but they're not as sketchy as the run into the cobble. That's when the most stress happens, and when you try to be in the right position. 20, 30k before you've got just a slow build up, the brakes gone or whatever, and you've just got this build up of teams coming to the front slowly and gathering at the front just trying to get the position and each k gets faster and faster and faster because more people are realizing oh there's more people at the front or oh, there's more people at the front or my team's at the front you know so it's just i think from 30k out from the first section it is mayhem it's just like complete chaos and i think that's when you sort of go right let's do it it's game on now this is it there's no uh, there's no sort of respite after this now so that's yeah lock in and get ready as soon as you hit those first cobblestones, you know this is this is Parirube. Uh, there's the cobblestone sections you do here. You can't you can't compare with anywhere else in the world. Uh, and basically, from that moment on, it's you know which race you are doing. You're doing one of the the best races uh, of the whole year. I don't think it's too important attacking it onto the cobbles, but where you come off it. So as long as you go on in a good position and come off. The easier it is to sprint out of the cobbles in a little group than rather a sprint at the back of the group. I think that's the, uh, I think that's where you can save a lot of energy. Yeah, like I say, last year was was my first Roubaix, and and sadly I didn't make it to the Arenberg Forest. I got got about 200 metres from it, and then uh, I was taken out by a car and and broke my hand, and uh, that was my race over. And 
I mean, I, I remember watching this race for years and years when I was a kid and, and the years leading up to last year and this one. And, and it's just an eerie feeling, even on the TV coverage, seeing the helicopter pan out as the, as the Pelotons approaches the Arenberg Forest. But I know this is the moment that everybody's been waiting for. This is the big moment of this part of the cycling season. It's the Arenberg Trench. The road gets narrow and you jump into the you pretty much have to jump into the forest because there's like a little reach right when you when you enter it and then you just go in blind hands on the off the brakes and on top of the handlebars and hope for the best it was quite tempo into Arenberg, so i was like oh, feeling all right here feeling all right got off of Arenberg, and i was like right stage two of the race now this is starts to get serious and we were all in a good position there and I was I was in the front with the guys through Arenberg and halfway through Arenberg uh, Kooks punctured so straight away I gave him my wheel and then the second time uh, second time my puncture was 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 way worse and uh, actually to be honest I thought my race was over <laughs> Step just going a lot on. Oh, here we go. Get across if you can because the 713 to Paris is just about to stop the peloton. Armand Demar getting there. Oh, and the police are stopping it now. Police are stopping it. Riders right? trying to get away and around. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That's not what you want to see. And we were just saying that this could happen. David Boucher yesterday in the equipe was actually, I tell you what, no wonder the policeman was stopping the last rider going across because. That's a, a TGV train, thankfully it slowed down. They got ridiculously fast speeds, and the policeman stopping things up. Thankfully it hasn't been a very, very long stop this time, but those are the sort of things that can wreck your race and wreck your day. David Boucher was part of a nine-man break, as we see this again, Sean, a couple of riders, ooh, not just taking on the barriers and getting hit by it, but we see a couple of guys so desperate to, to be in the front group here that they're taking on the train as well. Policeman telling them not to go. And they were going, it's crazy out there. It's sort of a shame that I didn't so when you're out on the front, you don't see anything, you don't hear anything that's happening, you just get the odd update, but it's generally if someone's got a problem really, so I didn't see anything all day, but when Jens got to the, uh, Jens came up to me in the bunch, I was just like, how are you feeling? He said, good, yeah, so I just wished him luck and then got dropped again. I just felt like I had to close gaps the whole race, uh, up until, uh, let's say, Carrefour de Larbre, last, uh, last cobblestone section, I came uh, really in the front and I knew, uh, yeah, this is where it's going to happen and I wasn't sure how much I still had left in the legs but uh, I know yeah, just maybe just best to try it and we'll see where it ends. Uh, Lars Boom went and I knew yeah, he was looking really good and I knew if, if somebody's going to close a gap he will. Uh, so I gave it my all to bring uh, to make it back to his wheel. Uh, but then to close that gap to the to the three first riders was wow, was really hard. I was I was really on the limit. Even that small little drag here in Paris Dubai we always call it the hill. It's it's yeah, it's too time. it's it's nothing actually, but uh, it hurt really a lot. And at the end of the first will be you never know. And it's where to position yourself on this track as well. As Stevon takes it up at the front now. Lompard is off at the back. Lompard's not going to take part. And here goes Degenkorb around the back. End. It's Degenkorb and Stevon as Van Avermaet takes off behind as well. And Mika can't do it. He's stuck behind. It's Degenkorb through the middle. John Degenkorb. Degenkorb all the way. What a race. What a man. And the first German since 1896 to win Paris Roubaix. It's John Degenkolb. Really, really uh, great to see uh, to see uh, Jens up there in the front and to come onto the velodrome and be in the front of Paris Roubaix. That's got to be got to be a dream for him come true. And um, this time he didn't have the legs, but you know um, he knows it's possible now. 
So I'm, I'm happy for the team in that way. Um, I'm disappointed for myself. I'm disappointed for the boys who rode, particularly for me, you know, some of the guys laid on the line. Sam Bewley was there for me every moment. And um, a silly crash with 50k to go. I, I went over the top of Matty Breschel and it was unnecessary. Got up, um, chain was off, the handlebars were crooked. And had to straighten the gear levers and the brakes were rubbing. So at that point I wanted to do what I shouldn't do and throw the bike but I got back on and I didn't even feel like finishing you know I just felt like I'd I got through the forest pretty good and I'd, I'd saved energy I'd had to have a bike change but everybody has has issues and I was I was calm about everything and yeah I thought I was making good decisions and to have something like that happen and it's pretty much game over. They always told me it's it's, it's a really amazing feeling uh, the feel of the room I've done it a, a lot of times before but never never for the win um, and uh, yeah how bad I felt in the final, you always have to keep believing and uh, I tried at my best but yeah in the sprint I just didn't have any legs anymore but it's, uh, it's a pretty amazing feeling turning up the velodrome uh, and riding for the win actually.